let us get started for today's uh, lecture. Yesterday we got introduced to the basic uh, signal definition and we saw that signal in our context means a function uh, that takes on scalar values. The independent variable also is a scalar. In the continuous time case, uh, we call the independent variable as t uh, to denote time and in the discrete time case, the uh, index was n, still we call it as time and n takes on values in the set of integers uh, uh, 0 plus or minus 1 plus or minus 2 and so on. Whereas in the continuous time case, t takes on all possible values between minus infinity to plus infinity. Then uh, we briefly saw classifications of signals. Uh, I have expanded uh, more about this in my notes and then uh, we started to look at operations on the independent variable uh, and uh, even though lot of manipulations are possible, the class that we are interested in, in is the affine transform. That is we saw in the continuous time case modifications of the form a t plus b and in the case of discrete time uh, counterpart the affine transform took on the uh, equation m n plus cap n. And then this kind of led us to the first difference between continuous time case and the discrete time case. In the continuous time case, you can undo the affine transform whereas in the discrete time case, you cannot undo the affine transform in general. And the example that we looked at was we looked at y of n equals x of 2 n and we saw two examples in which two different sequences that differed only in the odd indices gave rise to the exactly the same result after picking every other sample, the even indexed samples. And uh, expansion was the example that we saw was y of n was x of n by 2. And again this led to differences because if you look at n by 2 when n is odd the sequence at those values is not defined. So the example that we left with towards the end of last class was y of n was x of n by 2 and the sequence x of n that we started off with was something like this. And then y of n which was x of n by 2 I am drawing a rough sketch here and here at these indices things are not defined. You can supplement this definition with it being 0 for n odd and this is for n even in which case you can go ahead and make these as 0 values. But really we would want something like this and towards the end of last class I mentioned that more processing is needed to get something like this starting from this definition. Starting from this to get something that is similar to what happens in continuous time more processing is needed. And uh, why this difference comes about is easy to see. In the continuous time case when you have y of t equals x of a t plus b and y of t minus b by a equals x of t there is absolutely no loss of information. Whereas in the discrete time case when you have say y of n equals x of 2 n you are dropping every odd indexed sample values you are just throwing them away. So because of this you cannot get back the samples that you have discarded given the very nature of the transformation. In this context it is worth mentioning that under certain conditions you can recover the original signal. 
uh, you must have already studied about sampling from the previous course. Uh, suppose you sample the signal that is much more than the required rate. So, if you over sample the signal say by a factor of 2, then it uh, stands to reason that you can down sample by a factor of 2 and yet not lose any information. So, it is not that down sampling always leads to loss of information. Under certain conditions, it is possible to recover the original sequence, but in general this is not possible. 